this is a test video. I'm putting together this video to really put together my new hardware through its paces. Uh, I have a small workspace in my apartment and I make things, uh, make hardware things, software things. And I want to start producing video and putting on YouTube. Looking at a bunch of successful YouTubers and getting tips from them, uh, I'm going to test out various hardware and software and I have a project to go along with it. Um, and we'll see what happens. This is completely ad-libbed. I haven't rehearsed this very much. Uh, so beg your pardon as I ramble just a bit. So I mentioned hardware um, that I'm testing. So the first thing is the black dome in front of me. Uh, this is the Blue Yeti mic. That's uh, a very popular mic uh, from both podcasters and YouTubers. Uh, it's a very powerful mic. It has a lot of features um, just in terms of uh, you know being a digital microphone gain and different um, microphone shapes. So I'm still working that out, but so far it sounds pretty good. Uh, I, I think uh, the podcast use case is better because this is a giant microphone. It's it's kind of obscuring some of some of me. So uh, we'll see how I use it long term. Uh, the second thing, uh, which I'll show in a minute, is an overhead camera um, that points down on my bench. And the last thing I'm testing out is uh, the software I'm using to record. I'm using open broadcaster software. It's, it's very popular among professional gamers as well as YouTubers. Um, and shout out to Chris Gamble who, who recommends it. Uh, I'll, I'll be calling it OBS for short. Now, it's a super powerful uh, system while simple to use. And it, it tries to simplify the user interaction through this concept of scenes. So by having different configurations of cameras and screens and uh, you know, applications that you want to show, uh, the user can quickly switch between those scenes. And uh, that way, you can do live live streaming, which is its primary um, use case, as well as uh, kind of easy to do recording as a, as a single person. So one of the neat features of OBS is scenes, and I think a few other things can be uh, defined by the user and controlled via hotkeys. So simple keyboard commands. And uh, I have five scenes here. I can easily switch between them by doing command one, two, up to five, um, <clears throat> and it's very nice. But my current setup, which is wobbling as we speak, is a laptop because my desk computer is, is not good enough to run the software. And uh, as I hit the keys, it kind of wobbles a little bit. And I didn't don't really want to do that with while I'm recording. So I thought I'd put together a simple uh, hardware solution and use that as part of this, this test video. So um, the one of the toolboxes in a, in a maker's uh, one of the tools in a maker's toolbox is um, USB devices, and a lot of projects use uh, really low cost AVRs that have USB um, peripherals on them, USB hid devices that can simulate a keyboard and a mouse. And um, the most popular is the Leonardo or the Pro Micro, and that's running the Atmega 32U4. There's a whole bunch of other microcontrollers with. USB and, and specifically this head interface, um, a head functionality. Uh, but that's the, the 32U4 is really cheap, accessible, and can can run on Arduino, which makes coding applications on it really fast. So um, I had a couple of those lying around for another project and put together a uh, hardware um, OBS switcher. And this is the, the whole thing. Um, it's got the, the Pro Micro right here. Uh, and the bun bunch of bunch of different buttons which map to uh, the key the hotkeys I've defined in OBS. Now, um, <clears throat> let me see if I can zoom in. Testing the zoom functionality of the camera, it's kind of slow, which is really annoying. Um, but you can see the the breadboard a bit better, I think. Um, just taking a quick glance, uh, the microcontroller is here. Um, <clears throat> I got five buttons. They're all grounded and mapping to spe very specific pins on the Pro Micro, uh, <clears throat> and that's really it. The it's very very simple, and, and there's other projects that take advantage of its simplicity, um, but this uh, maps really well to to OBS. Um, now so let me zoom out. I wish there were some hotkeys for the zoom function. We'll see about that later. <clears throat> Now, <clears throat> with the 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 thirty two U four, the Arduino library only exposes five external interrupts, uh, and that's actually enough for me. Uh, I only have five scenes defined in OBS, but you know, for others, uh, their mileage may vary. Um, <clears throat> 
Why did I mention external interrupts? That's a good question. Um, <clears throat> let me take a short segue. Uh, interrupts are a very powerful feature in mo modern microcontrollers. Uh, they're basically a part of an event system. They allow you to call a function when an interrupt um, um, it gets triggered, and do something, and then return back to the main, main your main um, loop. And different microcontrollers have different number of interrupts. Uh, the Leonardo has, uh, or the 32U4 has five. Um, the SAM processor that's on the Arduino Due has um, unlimited because all the pins can be interrupts, and it just will depend between different um, peripherals. Um, sorry, different uh, platforms. There's also timer-based interrupts. So if you have timing critical or um, you know robotics applications, uh, those timer interrupts is 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 also really important. Um, but I'm just using the external interrupts for this project. Uh, <clears throat> now the because it's I decided to use an Arduino um, supported uh, microcontroller. I threw some code together in about an hour. Um, some of the code online is not that great, so I wrote it from scratch. Um, but you'll see that it's it's super straightforward. And now to to test my switching capabilities, let's go to the screen share of the Arduino IDE, and I'll try to walk through the code. <clears throat> so part of this is to simulate a keyboard. Uh, and there's an included library that's part of Arduino. Uh, so you just drop in the include um, include the keyboard.h file, and you have the the keyboard object at your disposal. And then I define a bunch of pins for use with the external interrupts. And um, in the third U4, I mentioned there are five pins uh, that can be used as an external interrupt with Arduino. There. Identifiers are zero through five or zero through four, um, but they map to different pins. So I'm just using this um, ordering of pins to map to the actual interrupt. Uh, but you'll see that it really doesn't matter uh, in a few moments with some helper functions. And uh, sort of the last thing in the beginning parts of the of the code is this command variable, and we'll use that to uh, switch between different keyboard commands. And I'll explain that more in a bit. Now moving on to the setup function. Excuse me. <clears throat> Moving on to setup function, uh, we have to uh, enable all the pins that we want to use as the external interrupt, uh, and it's simply as a matter of defining a pin, setting its mode. For this design, since I grounded all the the switches, um, I make the I use the pull up res internal pull up resistor and make it active high, and we'll do the same thing for the four other pins that are part of the circuit, and that's that's configuration. The next part is actually uh, declaring the interrupt, and Arduino has a simple attach interrupt function that we can use, which has uh, three um, three things you need to set. One is the pin that you want to attach an interrupt to. So I mentioned there's uh, a convenience method; it's digital pin to interrupt. So you pass in the the Arduino pin. So in the case of interrupt pin zero, the Arduino pin I'm using is pin three, and that maps to a zero, and it's, uh, you're off to the races. Or I could have put pin, I, I could have simply put zero, and it would have worked just the same. But if you have lots of pins, you, you, and your layout is different, um, this might be more convenient. Now the second <clears throat> input is the function you want to call when that interrupt is triggered. Uh, I prefixed all my functions with an ISR, which is short for uh, interrupt service routine. Um, but that's just a uh, convenience for me. And then, um, which, uh, I forgot what the term they use here, but um, on, when it's low, call that interrupt. So when that pin goes low, um, then call that interrupt. So you can actually have change or high, or there's a couple other options. Uh, and we do the same thing for different pins and different function handlers uh, or ISRs. And that's it for the pins and the interrupts. The last part of the setup is we use the keyboard object to begin um, to enable that keyboard object so we can use it to simulate keyboard strokes. Now, from here, I want to jump down to one of the uh, ISRs, the, the functions that handle the interrupts. So we'll go to ISR set command one. <clears throat> and it's very, very short. And for good reason. You actually want your interrupts to be as short as possible because that interrupt, um, that interrupt handler is, is taking time away from the main um, your main loop, and that could mean you're missing ADCs or, or slowing down the system generally. So typically, you might see a, a 
a short operation such as setting a variable and then um, immediately returning. So that's what we're doing here. What we're doing is using this command byte that I, I defined earlier to um, set a flag <coughs> such that in the main loop, it looks at that flag and determines which keyboard key to simulate. So we can hop on and go to the main loop. Um, so the keyboard command was set to zero initially. When I push that first button, it fires that um, first uh, interrupt handler, sets command to one, and goes to this case statement. <clears throat> the, we use that keyboard object, and keyboard.press starts a um, keyboard combination. So in, in our case, key left GUI um, is really just the command button, command key, uh, and command one, and uh, typing in release all uh, sends that as a, a keyboard combination. I think the method for a single key would be uh, keyboard.write. And then we reset that byte um, to command equals zero. So it, the loop just keeps on running, waiting for a, an interrupt, and, and it's on its merry way. And if we push a second button, for example, the, the one that um, sets keyboard, sorry, command equals to two, then it will do command two and et cetera. And that's the entire code. And it's 86 lines, probably a little bit more ver verbose than it needs to be, <clears throat> but it is easier to read. So switching back to um, OBS and back to my camera, um, well, that's really it. That This is my test video, and I want to show off my OBS switcher. Um, bring it back into the overhead camera. Uh, let me know what you thought. Um, tell me about the audio quality, the video quality, uh, my speaking, <laughs> my preparedness. Um, and also tell me what you thought about the, the switcher. Is this something you've seen before? Um, I'd love to check out other um, examples. Um, and also, would you be interested in me publishing uh, schematics for it? Uh, anyway, that's all I got. Thanks for watching.